Hi, I'm Jen Hearn, author of Fires of the Dead, which you can pre-order on Amazon right now. It comes out September 20th, so excited. And this is Daily Writing Advice. How can you make small emotions feel real? Well, let's start by defining what a small emotion is. For the purposes of this episode, I'm defining a small emotion as something that, in the bigger picture, has small stakes. So, it's small stakes whether or not a character retrieves the $2 coin that they dropped under the vending machine. But that doesn't mean that this small emotion can't feel big to them. Maybe the $2 is like a special gift from someone they loved. Maybe the $2 has a secret symbol on it. Maybe the $2 is just all the money they have left and if they don't get it, they're not going to get that chocolate bar from the vending machine. So we can see that the logical or objective size of a stakes doesn't really impact the emotions of it here. But I'm going to look at some specific ways that you can make these small stake events feel like a big emotion. And to do this, I want to give an example from The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, which is a fantastic fantasy novel. I love it so much. I have done a podcast episode analyzing it that I link to below. Um, and there is a scene in this novel where the main character, Quoth, has to play a lute, a musical instrument, in order to get into the Aeolian, which is this tavern that only accepts really talented musical um, players to perform there. And if you get in, it's a big deal, but it's super hard to get in. You have to do this audition that's really difficult. And Quoth is doing this audition, and he's playing on the lute. And if you step back and look at this objectively, like if you hadn't read The Name of the Wind, and you just were encountering this for the first time, and you thought, yeah, that doesn't seem like such a big deal. Like this guy is just wanting to audition to get into basically like medieval tavern band. Um, that doesn't seem like a big deal, not in the same way that say, a war would be, or an assassination of a king would be. And you're right. It isn't a big deal from an objective, objective level. But stories, fortunately, aren't about the objective. They're about the emotional, about the subjective. And this scene, if you haven't read it, is probably my favorite scene in arguably the whole King Killer um, Chronicles. So what makes it so good is just how much care is in it. This guy is just playing a musical instrument. He's just trying to get into an audition. If he fails, he doesn't die. His family doesn't perish. His village doesn't burn. He just just doesn't get in. But it feels so much more emotionally captivating than even a scene later in the novel where he's basically trying to stop a dragon from destroying people. <laughs> and what makes it so impactful in particular is this elevation of small emotions to big emotions. And there's a lot of ways you can do this, but I think... For me, what is the single biggest way that Pat Rothfuss did this is simply by having that mindset, about having that mindset of how can I turn this into something that emotionally to the character and therefore to the reader has huge stakes, something that has huge consequences and therefore huge emotional effects. So, quote, he's not just playing his lute to get an audition so that he can get in a band to make some money although that is one reason, but he's playing the lute and he's playing the song in particular in this scene because it captures his life. It's a song about his life. He's pouring all of his grief, all of his struggles, all of his hardship, all of the horrible things he's had to endure into this one song. He's bearing his soul to the world. And that just raises the impact of it so much. Like, I've almost gotten chills thinking about it because that's such a massive thing. It's not a character just trying to audition for pride or just for money or just for respect. It's a character auditioning to validate his identity in a lot of ways. And of course, the way that you convey that to readers is where the skill comes into play um, and that things probably will be very difficult to write a scene as similarly awesome to Pat Rothfuss's scene because he is an amazing uh, writer of prose. But if you can start with that base level of attempting to take these small level things and elevate them to a higher level, a bigger emotional level, then you're going to get readers captivated. And you might even surprise them as well. I know a lot of people who've read The Name of the Wind and are surprised that their favorite scene, the scene that is the most captivating, the most suspenseful, the most interesting, the most conflict-based, is just a guy playing a musical instrument. Like, how many fantasy novels have that? That's pretty awesome. So, that's our episode. Thanks so much for listening. I've been Jed Hearn. Go write extraordinary stories.